big belt buckle is the jewelry of country music. A big old bell buckle, first of all, makes a huge fashion statement, okay? Because it says stuff on it. It says, like, I'm from here, or I won something, or I gained weight and it's holding everything in. A big belt buckle is always going to work for you. As far as I'm concerned, the bigger, the better. My uncle had a belt buckle that actually you could rest your chin on. He was actually would use it to rest his chin on and nap when my aunt talked uh, continuously. I don't know, belt buckles, the bigger they get, you wonder, are they, you know, are they a protective device? The roots of the big belt buckle are in law enforcement and in safety, so that's why you have this protective device here to shield that. You hear it all the time, I'm going to put a cap in your bladder. Do you love me? Do you want to be my friend? George Strait has the CMA Entertainer of the Year belt buckle, which at that point, it's just you wearing your credentials close to your crotch. I wouldn't want to be standing behind George Strait, you know, get, getting on an airplane. That, that sounds like a, you know, a long wait. That's manly. That's cool. I would like to do that. I have not won any awards. And, you know, if you look at old photos of Reba McIntyre, you know, she's, she's a rodeo girl. The belt buckles were really special to her. <laughs> I held a, I wore it to hold my stomach in, so I did back with the old plate. I fact, she wore the belt buckle with everything. I used to wonder if she wore it with her bathing suit. <laughs> I've never worn a big belt buckle, and uh, I may need to now because my stomach is getting bigger. It works. It always works. It's a foolproof plan, the big belt buckle. I stand by that. Well, the rhinestone is pretty much the best thing that ever happened to showbiz, I think. Rhinestones are killer. Rhinestones is the, the country equivalent of pyrotechnics on a jacket. It screams, look at me. It says, I'm a star. I know that in rock and roll, uh, they get stoned. And I guess in country music, you get rhinestone. If, if you could break down country fashion to its atomic parts, the, the analog for the atom would be the rhinestone. I, I guess like one country western guy got a bedazzler at, at Christmas and just went nuts. And then all his friends went, wow, that's cool. And they weigh, have you ever worn a rhinestone jacket? They weigh about 800 pounds. You know something? Little Jimmy Dickens started out at six foot four, and that jacket dragged him down to 3'8". Like a rhinestone. I promise you, Porter Wagner walks out, you know Porter's in the house. I mean, he is really like the Liberace of Nashville. He's never been shy about rhinestones. He puts the rhinestones on the bottom of his boots. He just takes it all the way. I had Marty Stewart, and that guy, all these, the more rhinestones, the better. I can't deny I'm I started buying all the rhinestone suits I could get my hands on. I wanted something different. I wanted to do something different. Let's innovate. Let's, let's push the envelope around here. It's genuine and it's authentic. And you just say, oh man, that's so cool. My nipples are actually uh, rhinestone right now. If every man, woman, and child in America constantly wore rhinestones, the world would be a happier place. How upset can you be when you're entirely bedazzled? Pants and boots look is something that I can certainly relate to. Growing up on the East Coast, every Sunday I would tuck my pants into my wingtips before I went to church. Why you come in here looking like that in your high heel boots and your painted old jeans? All decked out like a cavalry. Walking right in here looking like that. Why you come in here looking like that when you could stop your epic in a gun? Whatever I see, anything at glitter top. Matching spandex and black boots and the spandex were tucked in. It was, it was a mess. It was pretty funny. It was comical, but by golly, I thought I was something else. I don't know that there is any advantage to it other than the fact that you finally made money and want to show off a thousand dollar pair of cowboy boots. Maybe for a street walker, it might look really great one night, like on a cold night and she needs some pants on or something, but other than that, I just think it never works. Now, actually, it was a pain in the butt to get them tucked in there. Why 
well, you know, there's, there's certain artists to me that can get away with wear, tucking their, their pants into their boots, even though it looks uh, idiotic, to say the least. I mean, you know, all due apologies to a lot of guys who could probably kick my ass, but put the pants back outside the boots. You know what? If you didn't have big shoulder pads in the 80s, you were a dork. I did it. I had the shoulder pads. It was Dynasty, you know, Linda Evans world, and it was wrong. We used to put them in our t-shirts, like just Fruit of the Loom t-shirts, and you'd poke shoulder pads in there. For some reason, you'd have to be careful about your shoulder pads, because if they slip, I mean, you could end up with a hump on your back and look like Quasimodo. I know when you're looking for an attractive woman, big shoulders is what you want. Big, manly shoulders. Right, because they didn't only pad the shoulders, uh, but they kind of embroidered them, right? Everybody did it. Loretta Lynn, and they were all spangly and dotty and frilly. Dolly, Lee Greenwood. The Loretta Lynn's um, shoulder padded glittery look is sort of Glinda the Good Witch of the North meets Otto von Bismarck. You know, they had these little strings that looked like, <laughs> looked like they went to the grocery store and put a mop on each shelter. That was great, too. <laughs> the hierarchy of women country stars has always had a military dimension to it with the shoulder pads. The Judds are sort of joint chiefs of staff. Um, Reba McIntyre is the rear admiral. Loretta Lynn takes the cake. She's field marshal of all the country music stars. No one the Judds at, at their heyday, shoulder pads were, were big and they were in and so they're kind of stuck with it. If you've ever seen Naomi Judd in person, middle tiny waist humongous shoulders. Uh, it could take you out. It's going to come back, you know. It's coming back, so watch out. Uh, I think it was in 1993 CMAs where she wore that really great burgundy dress that was see-through. I think Sandy Spica designed it for her. And she went out to do the song and <laughs> And I think it was the intense lights on stage that just surprised us a little bit. And before I start singing, I hear the crowd go, oh, it look good. I am so hot. But it, it definitely was a little more revealing, you know, than, than what, we, what we thought. And Linda at that point could have exploded uh, into pyrotechnics. Her head could have come off. She could have collapsed. Nobody would have helped her. Nobody noticed. I wasn't listening to country music at the time, but I heard that dress loud and clear. I wasn't offended, that's for sure. I was just kind of shocked that she had such nice boobs that she didn't show them before. And can you blame her? Because they're beautiful. They're fantastic. It was a very difficult point in Reba's career because her hair and her breasts were locked in a, in a really unhealthy struggle for attention and Reba was just cautious they love it. You know and then she had to live through in interviews and all the jokes about did you have your dress on backwards? That one dress will have people talking about Reba McIntyre and country music for the rest of her life. If she walked out in that dress now, I don't think it would be that risque. That's all you need is one dress. JLo had a dress, Reba had a dress, I wish I could have a dress. Got me in the papers. I didn't want a thing, but I got the papers. <laughs> Country music is nothing without big hair. It seems that the laws of gravity do not apply to many and many a country star. Just jack it to Jesus. Jack it on up there to Jesus. I'm going to stand up and say this. Big hair is in all phases of music. It's not just country music. Hello. Has anybody seen a Sheena Easton video ever? First, big country hair is a little too resemblant of that whole 50s beehive Laverne and Shirley look. So who, who's the gold standard of that? That would be Cammy Wynette, maybe? Maybe, you know, we could stand relatively close to her, man, but like maybe, maybe three feet away. But then, once you know, hairspray came around, in in the kind of the technological way that it did, it made a big difference for country singer. Life is sin, 
God bless Texas. I think that the hole in the ozone layer can be directly attributed to Reba McIntyre's hairspray use in the early 90s. Well, sometimes I guess it could take an hour to do her hair. Beating it to Jesus and spraying it. The bigger the better. That's old country and western hair. Well, you have to have all the tools. You know, you got to have the, the clips to hold up the top while you're ratting up the bottom. I don't think Reba would do that herself. It looked like it was chiseled in there. You know, let's let's make this and set it up here on Reba's head. You have to have the hairspray, and you have to have, you know, just get it just right. You sort of do it in phases and layers, you know, and pile it, just pile it, pile it up. Yes, hell yes, I've had big hair. If you can elevate your hair and you have the hair to make it to those heights, then I don't see why we're not seeing that in the Summer Olympics, if not the Goodwill game.